Hi, I'm Guy Delosier, Senior Applications Engineer for Go Engineer. Today I want to talk about projected curves. There's a couple different kinds of projected curves. One is um, projecting a sketch onto a face to get a curve. The second one is projecting two sketches together to end up with a three-dimensional uh, curve through three-dimensional space. So let's talk about the first one first. Sometimes on something like this soap bottle here, we need an area that is defined by something and we need a raised area. So what we want to do is project uh, our uh, sketch onto this face to make a SolidWorks generated curve that we can use as a sweep path. Okay, so if I roll back in history before we make this here, I've got a sketch, and I'll turn it on here. Uh, this is the sketch we're going to use, and you can see it's in the middle of the bottle. Okay, it's not on the outside, uh, it's in the middle. This is a, a kind of an odd shaped uh, face here. So what we need to do is project this sketch out onto this face. So we go to the Insert menu, Curve, and this is a, has a whole toolbar of all of its own too. Projected, and then we want a sketch on faces. Okay, we want this sketch. Just select the sketch onto this face. Click. So you can see the yellow preview here. If I turn this around a little bit more, we got a little uh, arrow right there. That's showing me the direction that this is going. If I wanted this the other way in the back face, I'd just click the reverse button over here. No, I want it out here. And you can see because this is a uh, uh, three-dimensional shape, it makes the curve the same shape as the face. And that's the desired result. So one, two, three, go. And then we make this projected curve. Now, anytime SolidWorks makes a projected curve or any other kind of, of a uh, curve, generates a curve itself, it will be this shade of blue. Okay? If I hide the bottle here, we'll see that we've got the curve and we've got the sketch. The sketch is gray. The sketch is two-dimensional. The curve is not. It's three-dimensional. Okay? So when I'm done with that, I can just hide that. Um, and now I've got my three-dimensional um, curve, my SolidWorks generated curve. And in the feature tree over here, uh, it shows me the curve icon. If I zoom in on that, <clears throat> we can see what that looks like. OK, zoom back out. <clears throat> All right, and then if I wanted to do a sweep on that, I would just open a sketch on the front plane. No, not the front plane, the right plane that intersects that curve and make a, a profile to sweep along that. That's uh, another whole um, lesson uh, somebody else is probably going to do, so we won't go there. So this is how we, you know, we generate the um, projected sketch or the sketch on the faces. Okay, and it could be multiple faces, not just one. Uh, it could cross multiple faces. Okay, so let me just close this. And let's look at something different here. <laughs> let's look at, um, nope, wrong one. Let's look at these car exhaust uh, sketches here. What I've got is two sketches. One is green, one is red. If I look at this from the top view, if this was the engine, we would see an exhaust system coming out of the side of the engine and going around to the back and maybe, you know, transgressing uh, over to the other side of the car, whatever. Uh, but it takes some path, as, as we're looking at a 2D view of it, to get there. Okay, if we look at this from the front view, we see that same exhaust uh, system coming down and out and then on an angle and then maybe horizontal and then up and over the uh, rear axle and out to the back. Now notice here it starts at the same place and it ends at the same place. Now that's not required. You're going to see this in a different one here where they're, they're different but it works uh, very nicely if that's the case. If they don't, um, if one is longer or shorter than the other, it will only go to the shortest um, of the sketches and it will stop. 
Okay, so now what I want to show you here is if we take these two sketches and we go to insert up here in the insert menu, curve, <coughs> projected, and we go to sketch on to sketch and pick these two sketches, it makes no difference which order, we can see we've got a preview now, this yellow preview of where this um, these two sketches would actually be in 3D space. And if I say OK, Again, we get the blue generated sketch lines right up with our, our red two-dimensional sketch and the same from the front view. That the uh, the blue sketch lines up with the, the green sketch because that's how they're derived, okay, to get this three-dimensional curve. So we can use this for all kinds of different things. Let me just turn that off. Don't need to save that. Now, this is something somebody dreamed up and this is a holder for a water bottle that might hook onto your bicycle frame okay so you'd have a clip down here at the bottom uh, and you'd have a clip up here uh, and it would be standing vertical and the bottle would fit down inside this thing now to get there from here you know if we look at this from um, the front view here we can see that the shape of this looks like a question mark sorta okay and if we look at this from the top view basically it's a circle so if we're going to do this, this is exactly what we'd want to do. Okay, we'd want to make our sketches. Let's go to, um, I want to look at uh, my water bottle sketches here. Now one of them is in green and it is a circular and the other one is in blue and it looks like the question mark. So you want to make sure and hook this on down here at some point. But this is basically what this would look like. Now, <clears throat> if we go to insert curve projected sketch on the sketch and pick these two we can see now we can see the yellow preview of exactly where that's going to go and when we say okay it's going to give us this blue generated curve well let me hide this two-dimensional blue sketch well before I do that let's look at it from the top view and we can see that it basically is this exact shape and if look at it from the right view I mean the front view the projected curve is exactly that shape so in isometric we can see our blue sketch here or that SolidWorks has generated which is a different color blue than I've got here I want to hide that sketch and I want to hide this sketch and again I've got this blue colored SolidWorks generated curve again anytime SolidWorks generates a curve it will be this shade of blue whether it's a helix spiral uh, or a projected curve or whatever uh, curve through XYZ points lots of other different kinds of curve uh, it will be this color so you, you can tell right away that uh, it's a SolidWorks generated curve and it will be virtually uh, continuous okay that's the whole idea here to have a continuous curve that a sweep will follow if you do things a little bit you know in a different manner sometimes you get something that's segmented and the sweep won't follow it all the way but this will be uh, a continuous curve so it will follow the whole thing all right let's turn this off here don't need to see that uh, don't need to see this anymore now let's look at something else here um, maybe a more practical um, use of you know this whole business what I've got here is a barbecue now this barbecue does not have the propane lines going from the propane tank here where it's red up to where it goes into the valve okay but I've taken the, the uh, uh, time here to do a couple of sketches in advance I use this face here to make this sketch here and I turned on you know temporary axes to line things up here so that I could line up the uh, uh, sketch line with the center of that uh, where it comes out of the valve and the regulator and to line it up up here okay great so I've got this thing and you know I can go back and I can edit this shape uh, uh, if I wanted to um, and change this you know different angle different radiuses whatever um, you know how long these things are I don't even have you know all of it's not even fully defined but I can uh, change this thing uh, anytime I want now if I go to this view over here let's uh, go normal to this face 
we'll see I've got a second sketch here that comes straight out here, just makes an elbow and comes down and goes to the center of where our propane would be coming from our regulator. So we've got these two sketches now that we want to put together to make the exact path through 3D space from this red regulator to this gray tubing here where it goes up into the uh, valves for the burners. Okay, so what I want to do here is I'm editing this part now in an assembly. I want to insert curve projected sketch onto sketch and just pick the two curves and we can see now the yellow preview coming right from the center of our regulator right up and hooking in to our tubing. If I say OK, now I've got the blue generated SolidWorks curve uh, to go where I want it to go. There we go. Okay. More of a practical um, application here of what uh, you might want to do with uh, a couple of sketches to make things to go where you want to go. You could do this same thing by sketching in, three, uh, in 3D. 3D sketches play by whole different rules and it's a lot more difficult. So this makes it very simple. A couple of 2D sketches, put it together, say make what I want and away you go. So you're good to go. Okay, so I just exit out of the uh, uh, edit mode here and go on with life. I could go back and open that and make a sketch. I mean, I'm sorry, a sweep. And uh, away we go. So anyway, close this up here. Now I don't need to save any of that. Go away. Now, this is a spring. And if I turn on the other side here, it's, you know, big spring. I don't need to see that whole business. Uh, but what... What is done here to make this spring <clears throat> is we start out with a 3D sketch, then we use a helix spiral here to come down to about in here. Then this little whoop de doo on the end, this, where the spring would be tied down or uh, fastened or whatever, is the hard part. How do you make that shape? Okay, well, what we've got here is a couple of sketches. There's one sketch there, and if you turn on this helix spiral so we can see it, and I'll shut off the uh, uh, solid body here. Okay, there's the helix spiral. <clears throat> I've got this sketch. Now it hooks onto the end of this helix spiral right here where it ends. Uh, you know, and this is uh, on the right plane on this particular one, by the way. <clears throat> and so I need that, that because that's going to define the shape of my uh, from one direction here. And the other one is from over here and this is the same size as a small coil here on my helix spiral uh, just so this works well okay but that's totally immaterial basically I want to make this little shape okay so to make this curve here we hide the helix now I want to project those two sketches together to get there so let's go to another file here that's not so busy <clears throat> Here's the same two sketches, okay? Same two sketches, and I just want to put these things together. If we look at this thing from the front view, we see the semicircular sketch. And note here that the top of this blue sketch here only goes to here, okay? So this whole thing's going to truncate at this level. And the same over here. This leg comes down below the brown sketch, so it's going to truncate here. So the whole thing is going to, you know, be in here, in this size, okay? So when we generate these um, curves, so insert, curve, projected, sketch onto sketch. I have something selected there. Maybe I want, maybe I don't. I don't know. So I'll project them, I'll click them. But easy for me to say. I'll select them myself again to give us this exact shape we're looking for, okay? Now, all well and good, but what's really happening here behind the scenes? That's something that, you know, that's going on as macros behind the scenes that you don't see that SolidWorks is doing that you may need to know about someday to get uh, something made the way you want it to be made. So here's what's going on behind the scenes. So if I hide this uh, curve that I've made, <coughs> what's really happening here is I've got these two sketches it's 
sketch two and sketch three. They're part of this helix curve here, but they're still usable again. So what they've done here is they actually use surfaces. So if I pick one of these sketches, let's pick sketch one over there, um, and I'm going to pick extruded surface. What I'm going to do is extrude this surface so it goes past this other sketch. Okay. Now, I want to do the same thing again with this other sketch. I want to make an extruded surface so that this doesn't need to be way out there uh, maybe come back this way a little bit okay so these two surfaces intersect now what we want and what SolidWorks is doing for us here it's generating the curve let's hide this sketch we don't need to see this now and we can hide the other one over here what SolidWorks is doing it's taking the intersection of this surface and these actually three segmented surfaces it's all one surface but it's like three segments it's taking where these intersect and giving us the sketch of that intersection now <clears throat> I've done another uh, white paper uh, that you can search for on intersection curve and that's exactly what they're using here it's called intersection curve um, and it lives in the tools sketch tools intersection curve it's really a handy thing to put on your toolbar uh, to use anytime you want to use it if you need to be doing things like this so intersection curve and you can use a plane going through a solid uh, and and pick a plane and pick all the faces that the plane intersects that you want a sketch line through and make sketch lines to there so it's really really a handy tool so what I've got here now is I want to pick my surfaces now uh, this is three segments so I've got to pick all three okay with all of those picked now where these surfaces intersect it's going to give me a three-dimensional set of sketch lines there we go right there if you forget something oh drat just pick it and say okay again and it will add in the things that you've forgotten okay so now I've got this sketch let me hide my um, I'll just say okay here and I'll hide my surfaces. Don't need to see those now. So there it is. <clears throat> now, if I turn on my projected curve, you can see that they are in exactly the same place from the front or from the right. They're laid right on top of one another. Um, the only difference is the projected curve is blue. The 3D sketch is gray because I'm in, I've got a sketch that I have exited. So it's a 3D sketch and it's gray. Okay, so this is what projected sketch onto sketch, projected curve. Uh, sketch onto faces is all about. It's a very handy tool uh, to be able to use most any time you need to uh, make some specialty curve like this or the curve on that bottle uh, so that you can sweep a, um, a raised area around for a label or something like that. It just makes it very very handy, very easy um, and very robust. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Guy Delosier. Senior Applications Engineer for Go Engineer, and uh, you have a great day, and uh, see you down the road. Mm -hmm.